Risotto is one of the dishes that should be quick, easy, and delicious. With my step-by-step -step tutorial, you can achieve a perfectly rich and creamy risotto. I have prepared boiling water, and we're going to put our dried porcini mushrooms. Give it a stir, and we're going to soak them for 15 minutes or until they are softened. Our porcini mushrooms are softened. Lift them out of the soaking liquid. So this will be our mushroom stock. Keep it in low heat. This mushroom stock will give our risotto an intense and tremendous flavor. Coarsely chop the mushrooms. Before we start cooking our risotto, quick reminders. Since I'm preparing a basic risotto, let's pair it with healthy protein. Salmon and asparagus is a great choice. For an experienced or professional cook like me, I can just part cook the risotto or I can cook two dishes at the same time. But some of you are beginners. I can just show you how to cook mushroom risotto and it will be boring. No meal is complete without side dish. Once the risotto is cooked, you have to serve it right away as it turns sticky and gluey if it held too long. So we're going to start cooking first the salmon and asparagus and we can reheat it later for two minutes in the oven once the risotto is cooked. Now for the salmon, I'm gonna cut this into half. So we have four salmon fillet. We're going to squeeze lemon juice all over the salmon. We're going to season the salmon with salt and pepper. For the asparagus, if you have thin asparagus like this, you don't have to blanch it first before grilling. We're going to grill it straight. Start heating the griddle over medium heat, adding some oil. Before you add the salmon, make sure the griddle is really hot. This will prevent the salmon from sticking to the griddle. Now for this thickness, you can grill the salmon for 3 to 4 minutes on each side. Once your salmon is halfway cooked, it's time to put the asparagus. We're gonna season it with salt, some pepper, and drizzle some olive oil. The salmon and asparagus is already cooked. Turn up the heat, transfer them to a baking tray. We're going to set it aside and we're going to reheat it later once the risotto is cooked. Let's start cooking the risotto. Use a heavy bottom saucepan. The heavy bottom allows heat to be distributed evenly and keeps the rice from sticking to the pan. We're going to use medium heat all throughout the cooking. For the olive oil, about 3 tablespoons. Add the onions. Let's add the garlic. Saute your onions and garlic for 2-3 to three minutes. Don't burn your garlic and onions as it can ruin the dish. My onions are softened. Let's add our boiled rice. Keep stirring the rice until it is well coated in oil. This method is what we call toasting the rice. It helps to loosen the starch and makes the dish creamier. Add the porcini mushrooms. Stir it really well to make sure the earthy flavor of the mushrooms is evenly spread to the rice. Before I add the wine, let me inform you, don't use cooking wines. These wines are typically salty and includes additives that affect the taste of your dish. I have Chardonnay, it has neutral and fruity flavor, and the rice will absorb the flavor easily. I'm just putting about half a cup. Don't use too much because it can overpower the dish. Simmer the wine until it has almost evaporated. We call this method as reducing the wine. It will enhance the flavor of the dish. As you can see, the wine has almost evaporated. Before I add the chicken and mushroom stock, make sure you keep them hot for even and faster cooking of the risotto. I'm putting about two cups of chicken stock and half cup of mushroom stock. Give it a good stir. 
Stir it often until the rice absorbs the stock. It's better to use a heatproof spatula than wooden spoon. It will reach all the corners of the pan, helping the risotto to cook evenly. When the rice appears almost dry, add another cup of chicken stock and half cup of mushroom stock. Stir it really well. By slowly adding stock, you allow the rice to absorb its liquid, creating the creamy starch consistency. In cooking risotto, it's important to stir often. If you don't stir enough, your rice will stick to the bottom and might get burned. Now my rice is starting to dry again. I'm gonna add more chicken stock and mushroom stock as well. Then stir it again. I'm gonna lower the heat. I'm gonna check the risotto again. It's nearly al dente. Now it's time to reheat your salmon and asparagus in the oven for two minutes. I'm gonna check again the risotto if it's cooked already. I'm gonna turn up the heat. The arboyo rice is al dente. The grains are tender but still firm to the bite without being crunchy. Let's stir in some butter. The butter will give risotto a creamy and silky texture. Add some chopped parsley. Add some grated parmesan cheese. You add parmesan cheese at the end of the cooking process. Give it a good stir. Season it with salt. Do the seasoning as well at the end of the cooking. Some ground black pepper. Look at our risotto. It's so perfect, so creamy, and silky. Again, once the risotto is cooked, you have to serve it right away. This is the perfect texture of the risotto. It forms a soft, creamy mound on a plate. Let's add the grilled asparagus on top. You have to plate it nicely to make it more impressive. Okay, just press the asparagus. Add some Parmesan cheese on top, chopped parsley, and salmon. I'm adding sophistication to this dish to make it more romantic. This is truffle oil. Make sure you get great quality truffle oil that is infused with actual truffle and not synthetic flavor. You don't really need too much of truffle oil because it can overpower a dish. Now to save you money, put it in a clean spray bottle and just spray it on top of your dish just a little. Now it's time to taste it. Wow! The risotto's texture is perfect. It has intense flavor of mushrooms, it's rich, creamy, but not heavy. The salmon and asparagus goes perfectly well with the risotto.